the year. And uh, sorry for last time, uh, we had uh, life got in the way of everyone, so we just couldn't do it. So um, I'm going to talk about what I meant to talk about last time, but then we also do a recap about uh, what we've seen this year, what's kind of the news, and then we're just going to keep it informal for the last one. And then if you have questions, feel free to ask. Um, in the meantime, let's go straight into it. So we're going to look at what's been released recently. Uh, so that should cover what happened in the last two, because we didn't do the last uh, update, uh, but maybe we're missing some stuff, so let us know. Um, a bit of the news on what happened last year. Quite a few things happened. Uh, and there's probably more to come next year, so uh, let's see. Uh, we'll discuss a bit what, what I expect at least to see ne uh, next year. Uh, we'll talk uh, quickly about class-based DSC resources and also reasons in DSC resources, and uh, we'll talk about why. Um, there's probably more people coming as I speak. Um, they will catch up the beginning anyways, uh, general uh, general updates. So released in slides called uh, SQL Server DSC 15. Um, Active Directory, so I wanted to mention that one because I released it, but there's actually an issue with, if I remember correctly, uh, Active Directory 6.1.0, and then there's a preview. So I tried to release it, but actually I've been told, no, there's an issue with it. So I had to unlist it. Um, until that's going to get fixed, uh, we can't release Active Directory. So you know, that's something to discuss probably on the on the repository. But uh, uh, Simon is not there today. No, I, I can't see him right now. So uh, <clears throat> Simon uh, has, been, uh, has been letting me know that, so I'm unlisting it. For now. And uh, GADSC has been released on a few changes I'll discuss hopefully later. Uh, sampler, which is uh, what uh, we use in the pipelines for all the tasks and also the um, the uh, templates to create new uh, resource modules and also to update old resource uh, old uh, pipelines for the old DSC resource. Um, so that one has been updated and there's new features coming that might be useful in the future. Uh, SharePoint DSC has been updated, like always, uh, very active, so that's good to see. And uh, DSC resource test has been updated as well. Certificate DSC 5.0, uh, X remote desktop session host to version two, Ooh, big uh, breaking change, that's uh, not often. Um, I am looking if uh, maybe one of the maintainer is around, but I can't see any. Um, Networking DSC 8.2 and a new version, actually, a new uh, new DSC resource, uh, PostgreSQL DSC version 1.0. And I believe uh, Ryan, Ryan Chrisman, you did that one, right? Correct, yeah. Yeah, so can you just tell us a bit more about this? Uh, it's still really early um, in what it can do, but um, I don't need to do the install for Postgres. Um, it is on Windows uh, for right now. Um, and then to kind of start mimicking some of the SQL um, server DSC stuff. So creating a database um, and then be able to run uh, PSQL queries um, with SQL files on there. So just basic uh, um, basic things, but a start. So if anybody has a need or some stuff they want done, let me know. Um, so, so that's what happened. It was a bit, I would say it was slow. So I know Johan, myself, Dan were really busy and I guess everyone. It's been a crap year probably for everyone. So uh, that's why it probably slowed down a bit. There's still a lot that went, uh, that was going on. Uh, and, and we're going to see that um, uh, a bit more with the, the new stuff. And uh, you probably have seen the previous anyway, the, the previous uh, DSC community calls. So quick recap. Um, there's, so, so We've seen there's a few there's news on hopefully you've seen or you you've even attended the DSC community calls with Steve Lee, uh, who's the uh, uh, engineering manager for engineering lead sorry for the PowerShell team. So they're working on DSC and they've been asking, okay, what should we do for DSC and how can we do this? And they like there's a few things they want to do. So they want to go uh, cross platform and to do that and to do that in a future proof way. They want um, they want it to be uh, to, they want to remove some dependencies that are specific to Windows and specifically SIM and MOF so everything around MOFs 
So to remove those dependencies, uh, they said, OK, we need to focus the work. So initially, we definitely want to remove everything that is not uh, easy to maintain in a cross uh, cross uh, platform way. So they said we're going to drop uh, MOF and we're going to drop SIM and this kind of things, and we should focus on uh, class based DSC resource. So that's for uh, I think the plan is for 7.2 uh, to get started on this work for 7.2, which is what uh, is being worked on at the moment. But maybe it's not going to be released in 7.2. We don't know how far they got. So it might be 7.3 or it might be later. I can't remember exactly what uh, Steve said. But the idea is going forward in the future, uh, the MOF on the MOF DSC resource will be uh, deprecated. Not for compilation straight away. At the moment, it's just for invoking uh, the DSC resources. But uh, eventually, they want to do something else with uh, the compilation as well. So that was a big news, and there's a lot of things uh, going on around it. And uh, if you're not too familiar with uh, the class-based DSC resource, I strongly recommend uh, the presentation that Bartek did for the DSC community, which was if you look at the community calls on the dscommunity.org site, uh, if you go back a few, you should see the link in there. So the real plan, I would say, for the PowerShell team, as far as I understand it, is to make DSC a great framework. So DSC, is a, it's got a lot of components. I'm not going to go back uh, uh, explaining the different types of elements or components within DSC, but the idea is for DSC to have a strong future, it needs to have a good foundation. The essential should be working well and it should be working cross-platform because this is where the technology is going. Maybe not you, maybe not you in your company, but in general, uh, they want to be able to do cross-platform stuff. So that's something PowerShell is good at, and they want DSC to just follow uh, the path of PowerShell to be good at cross-platform. So that's uh, that, that's one of the things they want to uh, invest in. Um, it's good to see that vendors are investing in DSC. So Puppet has a good example, and I'm just checking quickly if Mike is around. Mike is not. A problem. Uh, so Michael Lombardi works at Puppet, and he's released um, something that makes it much easier to uh, use DSC resource within Puppet, and it actually puppetizes the DSC resources from the community or, or the one you write uh, in-house. So then you can, mu uh, in, a, in, a, in a much easier way, use them into your Puppet configurations. So uh, you get all the nice things with a Puppet extension for VS Code, where you, uh, when you build your uh, Puppet manifests, it automatically does the auto-completion and this kind of things. So he's, he worked a lot on this, and uh, he's been uh, uh, talking to us to say, like, OK, I like to do this. How do we do that? And he's, been, he's done a great job. So um, definitely, I wanted to give a shout out. And if you haven't seen his presentation, actually, for Puppet, the last Puppet event, I forgot, um, I recommend you to Google Michael Lombardi Puppet DSC, and you should find his video. And I hope I will be able, on the next year, uh, get him to do a presentation for us at the DSC community. And there's also, obviously, Azure Guest Configuration. So Azure Guest Configuration is doing audits, so it's past, uh, part of uh, Azure policy. And they're doing in-guest configuration, and that's using DSC as a technology. So that's something that's really, if you haven't looked into it, um, I would say it's something uh, to be aware of, and definitely look at, into it. I'll probably do more presentation on probably Michael. I don't know if Michael is there. No, he's not. Uh, so, oh yeah, Michael is there actually. I just seen his join. Uh, Michael's probably going to do more presentation maybe on the new year. Um, we shall see. And then um, we did, uh, Michael and I did a presentation of uh, DSC is dead and uh, for PowerShell Conference EU uh, this year. And I really recommend you to look at that one if you haven't, uh, because Michael goes into uh, some more details about how, how guest config works and, and what it does and how it uses DSC. And uh, that's a for people already using DSC, that's a good way forward because uh, it's straight, like it's, it's very natural for you because it's just DSC resources used under the hood. Uh, we'll, we'll get into more details for that um, later. Hey, Gail, yeah, do you mind hi. if I ask a question real quick and people can just respond in the chat window? Uh, so I'm doing validation of some early versions of set right now. And uh, a big question on my mind, for an early, early preview, would the community object to uh, requiring that content be signed by the author? 
and I would publish a how-to on how to do that. Um, Key Vault actually makes it very easy, and for machines outside of Azure, uh, it's, it's also the same is true for ARC-connected machines. Um, you can generate a signing cert uh, and distribute that to, as a trusted certificate across machines pretty easily these days. Um, and I'm just thinking, like, from a security perspective, it's pretty good habit to get into signing things, and then we can sort of evaluate um, if that's if that should be the norm, and then you opt out and use unsigned if you want to, or if I've got that backwards, if you should, if it should be unsigned by default and you opt in to signing, which is how it traditionally has been done. Um, so any feedback on that uh, would be both timely and greatly appreciated. Thank you. So that's great that you said that. So I couldn't remember what you've said and what you haven't, so I didn't want to include set. Um, so if uh, if you don't know, as your guest configuration so far is doing audit only, that means you get the information about your environment, but set, which as you can tell from what Michael said, is being worked on, which is being able to make settings using, using Azure guest config. Um, so uh, Michael said it, not me. So uh, this is uh, this is worked. So the question from Michael is, would you prefer to um, uh, force uh, the um, the author, so like the DSC community as an example, but that could be you internally. Would you uh, so would you prefer it to be uh, signed by default, or if, it, if it's not signed, it's not available, it's not working, or would you prefer to be unsigned by default, and then you can opt in to have it signed only? Yeah, I think in both cases we'd want to have the option of breaking of sort of breaking out and doing the opposite. It's just like which of those should be the default behavior. That's great. Thanks. Good question. I have opinions, but I'm not going to share. Secure and opt out when possible. Put in the chat window, Ryan. <laughs> um, all right, so I'll carry on. So, so another thing, and then especially with this in mind, so uh, we are all familiar with the uh, DSC and the way DSC works and how you can apply configurations using DSC. Um, the with Azure Arc, there's new and, and this has been already uh, covered uh, by uh, Michael uh, in previous uh, previous DSC community call or sessions. Um, you can have now, even if you have on-prem servers that you want to manage, you can have them. Um, you can have them control them, I would say, through your Azure uh, subscription. So even if it's running on a, let's say, a vSphere, or it's running on another cloud, or just on a TIN, you can still manage them with guest config as an example. You can still manage them through Azure Arc. So that's something to bear in mind because that changes a bit um, how you could consume DSC resources. And and uh, there's more things coming next year. So as you've heard from Michael, not from me, uh, the set is probably coming at some point next year, hopefully. And um, and we'll see when this arrives for for guest configuration. And you heard from uh, you have heard from Steve Lee that um, there's more work being done on DSC and PowerShell DSC. And uh, we'll cover that in a bit. Is there some questions or or comments on that one? Maybe things I've missed. Will I, will I have a sip? No one? Nope. All right, I'll go next. Uh, next slide, thank you. Hmm. Predictions. Um, that is my predictions. Um, um, maybe you will share them. Maybe you say, like, no, it's not going to happen. I'm just giving that and putting that up for discussion here. So I think we will see um, more content to come from Microsoft around DSC and guest configuration. And by that, it might come in many different ways. Um, it can be help, it can be uh, resources, it can be um, examples of how to use it. I don't know, probably if they implement it, I would say for PowerShell 7 dot something, uh, probably there would be some documentation or some uh, demos or example going on around this. Um, the PowerShell team said they will open source PS desired state configuration module. They didn't say when. They said that's the intention. Things can change, but I know there's a strong desire for this to happen, and hopefully it's going to be done in 2021. Uh, I have no idea, and I don't think anyone knows when, but uh, but um, I'm sure this is the intention at least. 
hey Gail. Yeah. Can you can you just clarify just for for if for everyone the difference between PS desired configuration and PS desired state configuration? A typo. Sorry. <laughs> okay. I just right. realized that. Sorry. Uh, and so, I was going to say, there's the, the thing is, is you've also got PSDSC resources, which of course is the open source. Yeah. That's <laughs> so what, what so, is so, the thinking around any thinking, any prediction on that? So um, the the way it works at the moment is when you uh, when you get PowerShell, and whether it's uh, PowerShell 5.1 or whether it's PowerShell 7, uh, even 7.1, um, the you have a module inside it which is ps desired state configuration dot psm1 so it's a it's a partial module and that allows you to do a compilation and it used to include so in partial 5.1 on partial uh, 4 it used to include uh, some dsc resources in so um, in so this module actually was you can have the source of what exists and you can find it on your system because you have the PSM1 file, but it was not open source, so no one could contribute or no one could see exactly or easily at least uh, what was going on. Um, and that's been, so that's been in a PowerShell since uh, the WMF4, so PowerShell 4, and, but it's been obviously updated and changed a fair bit, I would say, uh, with PowerShell 7 because they needed to change everything and there's no more LCM and things like this. So that's what they want to open source, and that means, um, hopefully, we will be. It will be a bit more transparent how the compilation for uh, MOF, and maybe later it will be JSON or something else. It will be easier to understand what was going on, and maybe contribute, and and open that and clean that code a bit. Do we think? Do we think w this will allow us to potentially get rid of XPS desired or, or deprecate XPS desired state configuration? And PSDSC resources, and maybe bring them all together because we have we have diverged a little bit there, not majorly, but enough. Yes, so it's good to remind what the difference is between XPS desired state configuration and PSDSC resources. So PSD PSDSC resources is um, is there just to help uh, Microsoft uh, customers to uh, if they add if they have a resource on the configuration that used to work. Um, but they need a fix. The fix will be in PS DSC resources, but no new features will go there. So the idea is to change this the least um, uh, in the least possible ways to avoid breaking it and breaking it for customers. So then if they have simple resources or examples, they can still use the PS DSC resources. Those are the basics, I would say. But um, XPS desired state configuration is actually the community one which takes all the new features and improvements. Will we be able to get rid of all this mess, I would say, or those different things? Not completely, but maybe there will be an opportunity to merge that one in. I don't think that would be a good idea because I think a PS desired state uh, configuration module would need to stay as lean as possible, and then the resources would be in another module. So probably the only thing that we need to do is rename that we discussed that for years now for, for a long time. Uh, rename X PS desired state configuration. That's that my goal. Be... Um, I would also query one other thing, and of course that's the file resource. And the only only because we get we still get questions about the file resource popping up from time to time. So yeah, be good to. <laughs> How are we yeah. going to deal with that one? Any, um, I'm sure you that's can share. a good question, and that's a question that comes back very often. So uh, I think I've heard uh, Steve also mentioning it um, offline at some point. So it's something that is kind of known of, of, but there's no plan for it at the moment, as far as I know, at least. But yeah, so that it's will a problem. remain part of the operating system. Until the community uh, creates another one, or maybe the partial team or someone else, yes. The the, cool. the reason the reason was I believe for performance. Um, I think we will need to do something at some point um, if we think cross-platform. Like there will need to be one probably for um, Linux and uh, maybe Unixes if we can make it generic enough. So the question is, will it be possible to make it generic enough so it's also cross-platform? If we don't go too advanced, maybe that's possible. I don't know, is the answer. Hey, I, I think there's an opportunity there. Uh, so one of the concerns of having 
engineering rewrite file as a PowerShell based resource uh, is that file actually is pretty extensive. There's a bunch of behaviors in file um, that you know, like dealing with uh, copies across the network um, it, with different addresses and things like that, uh, that we don't even really know um, if they're important to the community and the people who are using them. And so my guess is there's a core set of requirements for file and it could be um, putting content in the right location. It could be more to do with file copy. Um, it could be like handling remote files versus local files. Maybe what we should do is uh, create an issue somewhere or you know, something like an RFC where we just collect feedback and especially looking cross-platform, like define a new set of requirements. Like in, instead of saying, let's duplicate what's there for a file because we might be duplicating something that nobody cares about. Um, if we let the community lead and just uh, first define requirements and then we could decide, okay, given what the requirements are, should we do this through the PowerShell team? Should we um, do this in collaboration with the community, uh, with the community taking the lead on development and the PowerShell team just advising um, and so on and so forth? I think that'd be a good way to do it. Yes, especially that uh, I believe there's a lot of things that I would say Windows sysadmin would rather let Robocopy does as an example. A Linux sysadmin would use rsync or something like this. So, so I agree that there might be a middle ground that's probably going to be more targeted and that we can probably make it cross-platform. So yeah, definitely something that we need to create an issue on. I'll take note so I can remember. Thank you. And so, where was I? Um, so yes, so the focus for the PowerShell team is uh, on the foundations to make to make DSC a great platform. So to make sure um, we've got the basis right um, with DSC, so that um, it's going to be future proof. And that is well, PowerShell is cross-platform, so DSC must be cross-platform. Um, DSC must be something that other companies can use, so then they can grow its usage. So that's why, as an example, Puppet um, is a good example of a, a third party trying to uh, leverage the DSC resource on the ecosystem to configure Windows environment at the moment. But why not? Um, why not cross-platform when it gets cross-platform? Um, obviously, uh, there's there's others. So Ansible already has also a Win DSC module, if I remember correctly. And and as um, other configuration software has. Um, but the idea is, anything that makes change to a configuration should be able to use DSC or the DSC resources. And that means you could invoke as within your script instead of writing how to manage a schedule task on Windows, you could just reuse and do invoke DSC resource, and then get the state of that with just a hash table of the parameters you want. So all the predictions, um, I believe, and, and maybe I'm, oh, I'm definitely biased about this, but uh, the interest will rise again on, on DSC and we will need more content to get people up to speed, uh, for people to know um, what has changed, uh, where it's going, and, um, and also what already exists. At the moment, we're still not doing a great job uh, of having centralized information and people knowing where to find the right information. So I think the websites helps a bit, but needs definitely some investment. So we need to do some more work on getting the websites to be a bit more, um, um, a, a better resource, I would say, to find information. So find the resources, find the properties of the resources, maybe publish the documentation directly to the website. That's something we've discussed, but we haven't had time to uh, implement. Um, and, and following that, if there's more interest, I think in in-person events and if they're back, maybe it's not going to be 2021, maybe well, we don't know, but um, even, even all the events online, uh, they probably will get more DSC content because if there's more appetite, then they would be more uh, keen on getting presenters talking about DSC. So get your sessions ready. We are definitely looking for uh, content uh, of, for the next year. So we're still doing this um, type of DSC community call where we give a few news and then we get someone to speak about uh, something DSC. So it can be just you showing what you're doing at your company or for a customer, and it can be between five minutes to uh, about an hour. 
and uh, I think it will still take time to move off Windows uh, PowerShell, and especially for those using DSE. But I think that's something we should we should think about because um, because things are going to move, and then we don't want to not think about it now. So uh, make sure you think about it, and then you voice your opinion, things that may be missing, or or the strategy that needs to happen. So when uh, Steve or the uh, PowerShell um, community call, or whether during the DSC community call, if you have opinions or things, just participate and, and share your opinion. And and Michael is always asking for feedback, and this kind of thing, so make sure your voice is heard as well. And a very good point, Mike, on there might be some uh, script analyzer rules uh, to, uh, to that needs to be working on, on other platforms. I think for the DSC specific ones, the one we create in um, in uh, DSC resource dot analyzer rules, I think they work cross platforms. I know we changed some for class based resource, and there's probably some more work to be done indeed. So, what about the DSC community? So, first of all, thank thanks everyone for being there, and and thanks for contributing and just giving your opinion. And and uh, just showing your interest is is already a good a good thing for us. Uh, special thanks to those who spoke during the community call. Um, uh, Raymond was there, uh, Bartek if he's around, and and everyone who contributes uh, and reviews, and obviously all the maintainers who do a lot of work to review and to accept the pull request and to make the changes. And again, next year we will look for more speakers. Uh, even if it's a quick quick demo. Just feel free to come and uh, and then just chat to us on Slack and then we can arrange something. What probably the DSC community needs to do in 2021 or, or aim to do maybe in 2021, uh, migrate to Pester 5. And uh, I had some good news from Johan today, actually, who's been doing some works on trying to lead the way in this area. So Johan, do you want to just quickly tell us what needs to be done roughly? Uh, roughly, yeah, we have to uh, convert all all tests in. I I, I did it for SQL SQL Server DSC. Uh, I started with the SQL Server, the, the common module SQL Server DSC dot common. Uh, uh, I create uh, I refactor the test so they work with Pester five, and then I tried to change back to PESTA 4 and then the test broke. So so the PESTA 5 is uh, it's much it's much better. It's it's actually more intuitive it, how, it, how it works with context and so on. But it it, it, it is not backward compatible. So there's going to be a lot of work converting existing tests uh, for big resources. I know Yorick is, is working on SharePoint DSC, uh, uh, and I, I'm trying to start to work on the SQL Server DSC. They are the two big ones with unit tests. Unit tests are the most uh, hard to change, so it's uh, it's going to be a massive work uh, to do this, but uh, I think it's possible. And uh, the good news is that. Uh, Pesta 5 actually works with code coverage uh, in the pipeline. It still doesn't really work with the uh, code coverage in the command line. So the tool that you can do, you can uh, invoke Pesta and do, do uh, uh, code coverage and see the coverage, uh, the missing lines that wasn't hit. That's not available, but at least you can get uh, tools in the pipeline like code cov. Uh, I/O to show in each in the PRs uh, what lines were not hit. It's it's a help for maintainers, at least uh, for me in uh, SQL Server DC to see when when I get the big changes if the tests uh, for 200 rows actually covers all the, the the changes in the diff. So yeah, it's it's gonna be a lot of work. 
Yeah, so so there's a two things to this. So first of all, we need to uh, update uh, Sampler. So Sampler is not yet compatible. It doesn't uh, use the right parameters for uh, invoking Pesto in PowerShell Group Live. So that's something we're going to try to work on it very quickly, probably uh, before end of January should be done. Um, and then, and then we let <laughs> we'll let Johan uh, lead the way, and then document uh, his findings. And there's another thing. So because um, I, I will discuss that in a bit, uh, we might also want to um, update the MOF resource to class-based resource. Then that might be a, a good thing to do at the same time because you will have to update the unit tests at the same time. So that's something that it might be less work to do both at the same time. And we will try and we will let you know, obviously, probably uh, next DSC community call, what we feel about it and what we tried and the experience we got. Uh, but that's something that uh, probably we will have to uh, think about at least and probably work on in 2021. Um, there's, oh yeah, there's another one. So Dan's been working on, um, so uh, I don't know if, you, if you're aware, but um, uh, GitHub has changed um, the default when you create a new repository, I changed the default uh, master, uh, sorry, the default branch to from master to main. So Daniel's been working on how we can make this work and documenting it. So maybe Dan, you want to uh, discuss that very quickly? Yeah, sure. Thanks, Gail. Yeah, so this is this is a process. There is a number of steps uh, to do this. We just needed to make a basically document. There's about five or six files you need to change in each repo, as well as things like branch policies and default branch. So I've been working on a blog post. I actually had it mostly complete last year, but did a noob error and, and didn't push my changes and actually lost my hard drive. Um, so lost that. So I've got to recre finish recreating that. So I sh the aim is to have that out. Um, we've already done one, which is WS Man DSC. So you can, if you want to have a look at at, at the process, it's it's in there. But uh, the goal will be have that uh, a clear documented process by the um, by the end of this year because uh, I've got a couple of weeks leave. So that's what I'll have the time to get that finished up. Perfect. And um, so that's coming as well. And. Um, yeah, so we need to improve documentation content. So if you're not aware and if you want, like if you believe that we're not doing a great job uh, for some documentation or some articles or even the layout and the colors of the dscommunity.org website, everything is open sourced. Um, it's on the DSC community organization and you can contribute, submit pull requests and uh, we usually review and push that when it gets to the website, just a static web. Uh, website on you go. There's some documentation. If you have any question, let us know. Uh, we've already had some bloggers. So uh, Johan, Yorick, uh, Raymond, and um, myself, uh, we've already on probably Daniel. Daniel at least edited a few things, uh, but uh, we've had a few articles in there uh, about logging, about um, using uh, something to manage the LCM with maintenance windows. That's what Raymond did and uh, some about Pester 5 actually that uh, you handed. So there's a few content there and we need to improve that and do more of those. Um, and we need also to, uh, we had some feedback on this, um, how to consume DSC so the different ways and the different versions and also how to use DSC in real world scenarios. So I know there's some, um, some good content for the PowerShell Conference EU from uh, Bartek and Daniel both did that a few years ago now. I believe Remen did a few, I did a few on this, some of the people that did some, so uh, we need also to maybe create some content on DSC community, or at least link to those content. That's something simple. If you know there's good resources somewhere, feel free to create just an article to say, hey, look at those resources, look at this YouTube video on these things. And uh, probably we'll need to, uh, create more resources and more cross-platforms uh, documentation for DSC when uh, time is right and as uh, the PowerShell team asks us for feedback. Yep. So yes, as we say, the big task probably uh, migrate to class-based DSC resources. And um, the reason for that is, uh, as, you, as, as we've discussed, very quickly at the beginning, um, the PowerShell team is looking at imp uh, improving DSC in PowerShell 7, and that means um, supporting only class-based resource. So that means the MOF-based MOF resource will not be supported anymore. So 
one option is, and that means for uh, PowerShell dot seven, uh, PowerShell seven dot something, and and that means for those one, it will have to be class based resource. At the moment, many uh, DSC resources are not working uh, with PowerShell seven anyway because they need some libraries or they need something which is not compatible. That said, we probably need to get ahead of the changes and make sure we all have experience with class-based resource. They're usually a better way to express because it's PowerShell code. It's uh, easier with the ID, so whether you use uh, VS Code or you use the ISE, uh, it's slightly better IntelliSense experience. So that's definitely something to look at. And it's not maybe high priority for some, but it's good experience to get. And there's also some tricks, I would say, to uh, do proper unit testing for your DSC resources. And that's something that we started uh, documented. Uh, Nicola was on the line, I believe, has been working on this, and I will try to have to show you very quickly where to uh, look for those changes. Another one, and Michael, because you're there, I will ask you to maybe present quickly the reasons behind reason. And I think that's a great addition that um, uh, Azure Policy Guest Configuration added to DSC. We always used, and we're still using in DSC, mostly logs. That means you need to have the variables log to see what was going on. But actually the reasons is a very good uh, approach to get more information on your resource. So maybe Michael, you can present very quickly. I don't have a laptop in front of me, so I can't do a screen share, but I can explain it. Uh, yeah, yeah. No I, I will show I will show the, the doc uh, just after that. Oh, sure. Sounds good. Uh, so the whole idea, like Gail said, we've never, well, for, for Windows PowerShell, um, we only used get-dsc resource uh, manually, meaning like if you were in PowerShell and you ran get-dsc resource, it was a handy tool to see what the current state of the machine is. And then, of course, uh, get-target resource was used often inside of test-target resource. Um, otherwise, it, was, it wasn't really used. So uh, for the governance scenario, uh, an example would be something like STIG if, uh, or, or CIS or PCI DSS or HIPAA or whatever baseline matters to you. Um, if you wanted to do an audit and we were using DSC uh, inside of guest configuration as the language abstraction and as the platform, then uh, we would run test. Test would check to see for all of the settings included in something like STIG. Uh, are they in the correct state? Yes or no. And then for reporting purposes, everybody wants to know uh, if this machine is not compliant, why is it not compliant? And for the settings that are compliant, can you provide evidence that it is compliant? And so get dash. Uh, um, sorry, I think I said get dash DSC resource earlier, but um, get dash. Uh, Desired okay. resource. Thank you. Yeah, get this target resource ultimately um, as a function uh, provided that capability. So we've been using it extensively. And then, of course, just thinking about how that information flows back to uh, a microservice we host um, and then ends up in reports, you want that data to be structured. And it's pretty free form, but uh, it, it needs to have just enough schema around it that the service can take that and incorporate it into a data structure. Um, it's just a big data platform, so it's it's not really locked in the way it would be in uh, some, something like a more structured uh, database um, schema. So basically, whenever you return results, uh, you know you're still just returning a hash table, but uh, one of the properties becomes reasons, and then there's uh, a little bit of structure around how you uh, set up that data. But that way, when it shows up in the web browser or an Azure resource graph, which is sort of like a live big data platform, um, or if you query the API directly, or if you use the commandlets to get data out, then you're going to get that information back in a predictable way. And um, one of the most important things that has come up for that is, uh, this was this was like totally surprising to me, but when I went out and talked to customers about what they wanted to do with this sort of uh, audits for configuration baselines, I found that there were actually two teams that care about this. There was like the security and operations team, and they want to think about tooling and the uh, the, the script that's actually going to retrieve the information, like the technical details of implementation. And then there were compliance people, and the compliance people. Every time I met with somebody from a, someone who said they were coming from a compliance team, they seemed to just open Excel, and they just wanted to take data from reports and be able to 
uh, plumb that into other systems like Archer to track exceptions and things like that, but they tended to not care as much about tooling. And so getting this data into something like um, resource graph so that in one big output, you can take thousands of machines and uh, their current audit status and pump that out into something that, you know, something like a CSV or something that Excel can understand. Uh, so it can be quickly digested by somebody who's not technical turned out to be a really important feature. Um, and as we start getting into now being able to say, okay, we also want to help you get those machines into the correct state to meet your government's governance requirements. Um, then you, see you sort of uh, start acting on the data collected by GET. Um, so that, that's where reasons came from. Perfect, thanks. So, so yeah, that's a great introduction. And that's something that we can only already implement in DSU resources. And, and another benefit is when you do this, you already create uh, the data to, uh, to log, if you want to put that in the log, and you get the data for free, I would say, if you want to log it, or if you want a uh, guest configuration, or if you want DSC to return it when you do a get. Let's say you have an issue, the first thing you do is, instead of opening the log, maybe you would just do the get to see what was going on uh, for that DSC resource and why it wasn't compliant, for instance. So uh, with that in mind, we changed Sampler to also give some examples of how you could implement this uh, for a DSC resource and specifically a class-based DSC resource. So Nicola was a hey, computer's being slow, sorry. And uh, Nicola was on the call, actually did this. He's there. Um, and uh, templates. And uh, let's do the class folder resource, which is a full example. And you've got reasons, you've got a template there. So I'm just going to show the template for the reason. It's just a simple class for the DSC resource. And then your main class, you can see, implements the reasons there. So based on that and based on sampler, if you want to add a new, you can just uh, you can just do add dash sample and then you do which type of sample and you select that one, which is the class folder resource. And then you can create that within your existing uh, project. And I'm going to show you that uh, very quickly. So, so I wanted to very quickly introduce the reasons and uh, why they're great, in my opinion, and, and how you could add this to your uh, to your resource. And another thing that when we were doing this, and actually before even we were looking at the reasons, um, so Johan and uh, where was it from the SQL uh, Server DSC, or maybe it was the uh, maybe it was the other one, the uh, SharePoint DSC one. Um, we were, or even GEA DSC was doing a test DSC parameter state. So the idea is um, you have uh, you have information you can get, so you can get your DSC resource with the get, uh, sorry, the get target resource, and you want to compare with what you want to set. And that's a function that you get what the current state is and what the configuration tells you it should be and you just compare these two parameter sets, and then you get the difference. So you get the delta between uh, between what you expect and what you actually have. So, um, so the test was just returning true or false, but the logic was all there. So we thought, and I think Johan thought of that, say maybe we should just compare those parameters and return exactly what is not compliant. And, and now we've added that function and extended it a bit um, in the DSC resource .common that you can use in your um, in all your resources, and by using this, you have a clear view of um, what is not compliant, and that enforces you as well to have a good get target resource. It was not used before, but by using this uh, approach, it forces you to create a clean get target resource. So then you can get it, and then you can do the comparison with what is said. So um, I believe that's a great pattern as well, and that might simplify your resource because we wrote it once in dscresource.com that we can update and you can consume it um, in every resources that you want to. And GADSC has been updated. Uh, so GADSC is a bit the, um, uh, the experimental ground, but also the, the leading the way with class-based GSC resource and this approach of uh, compared DSC parameter state. 
So if you have, if you want some example, I really recommend looking at that one. It also provides the reasons, uh, if I remember correctly. So it's got all these three features that that we discussed uh, so far. Any question on that one? Before I go to the next one, <laughs> I already talked very quickly about the sampler updates. I'm just going to show you a quick demo, but I want to make sure you don't have too many. You have, you have. If you have questions, feel free to ask them now. Uh, just, just one question on the class-based testing. There were some comments a few months back that there was trouble mocking um, classes with Pesta. Ha has that been uh, resolved, or is it a good, is it a, a, a an agreed way to approach that? So there's still a, so it's still a bit tricky, but uh, the trick is also documented in this. So in the class uh, for the resources, the cl the trick is all is just that. Uh, making sure it works and having some more experience with it was uh, the challenge, I would say. And no, I would say it's probably documented in there if you look at the unit test here and uh, for the resource on this one. And you can see there, um, you have, uh, let me just, you see, you create the instance on that. Uh, and then you will you will try for this one. And then on this uh, on this instance, let me um, why is it? There we go. Mark for the object instance. Sorry, I need to. Read. So basically, if you look at this at uh, this example here, um, you will be able to find how we test uh, what works and how we mock. I would say the. Um, uh, how we mock the methods to be able to test those methods uh, without actually, it's not really a mocked object, it's just an object that then we over, we overload or we override uh, some of the methods. Uh, do, do, do. I, I haven't looked at that in a few weeks now, actually a month. So maybe Nicola can point me to the line because I know he's on the call. Uh, where's the mock? Add member, force member type script method. There we go. That's the one. So that's what we're doing. So for the instance, uh, we just create a new script method to mock the get method of the object. And that's the ID behind uh, mocking the method um, for, uh, for the DSC resource. So then you can test what happens there. So Definitely. So at the moment, this is an example in uh, Sampler, and then it's also in use in uh, GADSC. So if you uh, if you want, first I would say look at GADSC, but at some point we'll definitely make a blog post about it and on just the uh, the challenges, limitations, and the workaround we found. Hopefully that will answer the question. Cool. Thank you. Uh, more questions? Maybe we can uh, mention that uh, for the compare DSC parameter state, the the origin was uh, test uh, DSC parameter state that uh, we had a presentation on this community community call a while back, and the compare DSC parameter state is an enhancement of that. Uh, which uh, actually returns a hash table uh, telling if the property is in, in, in the desired state or not, and uh, also if if the type is the type the desired state type is one, but the actual type is another. So you can you get uh, more properties metadata about metadata about the actual properties, uh, and we can also mention that. There, there's another one that is called uh, compare resource property state that is also uh, an. It was born out to test DSA parameter state too, and now compare DSA parameter state is, I would say, it's the evolution of that as well. So now we have three things doing almost the same thing, but compare DSA parameter state is the latest. And yes, uh, and you the, try. Yeah, you should vote to that. 
Yes, and on the test, DSE parameter state has been updated, so then it used the compare under, underneath. So the test now is almost empty and the code has been extracted to the compare. And the other one is left at the moment for backward compatibility. Um, the compare DSC property, you know, that's the one. Um, but uh, but probably it, maybe we will see if we can just uh, remove it. But there's been, as you said, a, a few iterations on the compare uh, DSC parameter state. And uh, so there's a lot of new features since the, the other call that we had about this. Yeah, uh, we just haven't had time to document it, unfortunately. Yeah, and it's, uh, I think it's only a sequence of DSC that uh, uses compare resource property state. So yeah. we have to convert out the, those resources to the new one. Yeah, and then that's we why can we, remove them. Yeah. yeah, that's why we don't want to, um, we, we don't want to remove it too early. So, um, yeah, so the last thing, uh, there's there's been a few updates in Sampler, so I don't know if you've been um, uh, keeping up. Uh, we are uh, 109, and, and the reason I wanted to show you that is just to remind you how easy it can be to create a new mo a module, a new resource module. Um, you can do uh, a new sample module, and then you have parameters there. So I will just want to do that here. Sorry, I forgot the dash. And then module type, you've got different things. So if you're converting an old one, I would say definitely use the DSC community. I think we've converted most of the ones we wanted to. Um, but this one is still available, and I think we will probably uh, have another go at updating the DSC community um, uh, module type, uh, and then we will make sure that it works exactly for new modules as well. But at the moment, I'm just going to do a complete sample for, for the demo, and then you can add more information there, but because it's using plaster under the hood, you can ask for me, so what's the module name? Uh, let's call it my... Uh, DSC community, and then description, just do it. And then plaster kicks in, it, it sets all the files and with the right parameters, so then you can already start working on your module. So I can do, I can open that in code, actually it's, uh, DSC community is the name of my module. Let me bring VS code. I, I'm not going to go in details, but the idea is just to show you. Uh, it created all uh, the files you needed. It's already on this one. It already populated some classes, for example, on things like this, just to make it easier to start. Uh, but you should remove all the things you don't need, and you can also, when you're there. So let's do CD DSC community. You can add now. Uh, sample and in the samples you've got different types of samples which is uh, classes if you want to have add a class a uh, class for the resource that's the sample i was showing you earlier or a class resource if you just want the class resource maybe you want to add a composite or you want to add an enum or you want to add the examples or things like this github config so you can add pretty much any of the things that we have in the templates um, or a morph resource which is what uh, we used to do so just to show you that you can do this, and then you can straight away build and resolve all the dependencies that you need for the build, and that's going to compile things in your machine, and that's going to pull everything. Even if it's not installed on your machine, it will pull it. So it's probably familiar for everyone. I just wanted to remind you that uh, that's one way of doing it. As you can see, we've been through many, many iterations of that tool, um, but there's probably more things to uh, improve, and the PESTA one we described earlier is, is one of those. So if you have any questions, again, go and chat to us in the Slack channel. Anything else? Do you have any questions? Uh, So I'm just checking, going through the chat very quickly. No more questions. All right, so the next DSC community call will be the 27th of January. If you want to present something, get in touch. Otherwise, hopefully we will have some other things to show you, uh, depending on the news and how, how things go. But uh, but we would love to have some more uh, community contributions and presentations. Even, even if it's a demo of the module you just created, or if it's um, showing what you can do with the module, how you use DSC, uh, maybe how you use DSC in some other context, 
I know someone's been working on getting DSC to work on ARM, I believe. Or so, so there's a lot of things. Um, yeah, there is a lot of things that uh, uh, we'd love to see. And yes, we definitely would like to have more reviewers. When someone creates a pull request, it's good to review the code. So then we can merge it quicker and give feedback, especially if someone starts or someone's not used to create pull requests. It would be great. Anything else to add? Johan, Daniel, Michael, Raymond, anyone? Nothing. Great, great job, J Gail. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Gail. Yeah, awesome. Very good. Thank you. All right, so Merry Christmas to everyone, happy holidays, and um, enjoy the the rest of Europe, but especially the new year. Yeah, awesome. Thanks Thank you everyone. very much. And uh, Daniel, you can stop the recording, and then uh, you will be able to upload it later. I will, I will share that up on the YouTube, so it'll be available later on today. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, so, Thank you very much. Thanks, you, everyone.